Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Andrea and I'm a former pastry chef and I'm here to help you guys with any sort of pastry chef career advice. So if you are deciding whether you want to become a pastry chef or you are already on your way, you're in culinary school or whatever your situation may be, then this video is for you. And if you haven't already done so, I would love for you to join this community and support this channel by subscribing. I have a lot more pastry chef related videos for you guys in the future, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. All right, so let's get to today's video. This was requested by a few of you, and it is a typical day in the life of a pastry chef. And today's video, I'm just gonna focus on if you're working in a restaurant. If you guys are interested in seeing a typical day of the life of a pastry chef intern, or working at a catering company, then let me know down below in the comments and I can make separate videos for those. Okay, so before I jump into the actual day in the life, I just wanted to mention that this is just based off of my personal experience working in Canada in particular. So it might vary if you're a pastry chef somewhere else in the world or it just varies restaurant to restaurant. So I can just only speak to the experience that I've had. So it might not be exactly like this for you when you become a pastry chef, but this is a pretty good general guideline. All right, so the first thing is you're obviously going to get to work and you're going to change from your street clothes into your uniform before you kind of do anything in the kitchen. Now, when do you get to work? This is really dependent on you. From my experience, I've always had this kind of flexibility and autonomy over um, my start times as well as just managing my own schedule. So for this, it's kind of tricky to pinpoint an exact time. You could start extra early if you knew that you had a really busy day of events or special occasions that you had to prepare for. So you might come in around seven or 8 a.m. That's pretty early though. Um, generally, I would say I would start between 10 a.m. and 11 a.m. And this is if I am preparing to work the dinner service. So I'm actually gonna be in the restaurant plating my desserts when people order them at the end of their meals uh, for the dinner service. So the first thing that I will do before starting any work in the kitchen is I will go check on the computer and see how many reservations we have booked for that evening. Now, this will generally give me a good idea of um, how many numbers I should prepare for in terms of having um, the amounts of each of my desserts on the menu ready to go in anticipation for that many number of guests. But keep in mind, there were many times when I'd work in the restaurant that I would check the numbers at the beginning of the day and I would think, oh, it's gonna be a pretty slow night. And then those numbers would suddenly pick up halfway through my day and I'd have to make some adjustments to what I was making and make some more of each dessert to accommodate for that. But typically you will learn kind of the trends of your restaurant. So obviously if it's like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, night. Those are your busy times. The other days are not. Okay, so after I have a rough idea of how many guests we're going to have that night, I will go check my stock um, to see what exactly I have and then start creating a to-do list of what I need to make more of or what I'm completely out of. So I'll check in the refrigerator, in the freezer for, uh, for example, ice creams or gelatos if that's on my menu, as well as what I have stored on my actual station, it can be things that are like dry goods, like prepared cookies or cannoli shells, things like that. So once I've gone over everything, then I have my to-do list ready to go and I know kind of what I'm gonna have to do during my day. The order that I do those things, I will just kind of determine um, as I go along. Obviously things that need time to cool in the refrigerator or to set, I will do those things first so that I can do other things um, while those are setting or if things need to bake for a long time in the oven, I will get those things prepared first so that I can do other things while they're baking. Um, it's all about time management at this point and getting things done really efficiently. Oh, and I just wanted to mention that 
not at every job that I've had, but at some of them, I was in charge of making the bread for the restaurant dinner service. So before starting any of my dessert prep, I would start on making the doughs for the bread. Sometimes I'd be in charge of making the pizza dough. So I would do all my dough prep first so that those doughs can rise and then I can get started on my own prep and then figure out when I'm going to bake them off um, during my day so that we have bread ready to go for the dinner service. Okay, so at most of the restaurants that I worked at, we would have some sort of staff meal or just time to have your own meal before the big dinner rush and it's like showtime. I always compared it to um, like being in a play or being on set and once dinner service starts, it's just like go, go, go. There's all these moving parts in the kitchen. Everything's happening fast. Um, there's a lot of problem solving. You're gonna run out of stuff. You're gonna have to improvise. Um, so that part of your day is really fast. The lead up is very quiet typically in the kitchen. Um, we'll have music playing. You'll be talking to your coworkers, but you're just kind of calmly getting things prepped for this uh, showtime dinner service at the end of the day. So typically before this like staff meal or this little bit of downtime before the big rush starts, um, I will have already prepped my dessert station. So what I mean by that is that once orders start coming in, I have everything laid out pretty strategically so that I can plate my desserts as fast as possible and everything is ready to go stocked. I won't have to be you know, rushing around searching for things last minute when those dessert orders come in. Now, depending on the size of the restaurant, um, I've worked in big and small. So if it's a small restaurant, at this point, if you are kind of done your duties as the pastry chef and you have a little bit of time left over, you're typically going to jump onto some other stations and help prep um, their stations with whoever works on them. So you get to kind of jump around in the kitchen and see who needs some help. So don't think if you're the pastry chef, you're just gonna then hang out and just kill some time. Like, no, you don't have free time. You know, you're still part of this kitchen team at the end of the day. So you're going to help your fellow coworkers out on their stations. But if it's a really big restaurant and you have a lot of dessert prep to do, then like that's all you're doing because that's your domain. All right, so during the dinner service, I would actually be jumping onto another station with my coworker and it would be like the appetizers, salads, and some side dishes uh, to start off. And then I would help out with pizza making as well because obviously people are not ordering dessert right away. So I would help execute that. Then once people started ordering desserts, that was my time to shine. So I would start plating up my desserts. There were some times when I would need then help. And I just wanted to mention that when you're working in a restaurant, there will typically be like two to three dinner rushes or rounds if you wanna call it. So it's like the early people that come and dine a little bit earlier. So that's your first round, and then you have the next round, and then the late, um, the late diners at the end of the night. So you kind of have these mini rushes within the course of the night. So then once things start dying down at the end of the night, there might still be some people dining. So you're still plating up some of the food that's going to them. But when things are winding down like this, it's a good time to start cleaning up your station. So I would start with my pastry station and I would just slowly start putting things away that I knew that I could put away or kind of like half putting things away so that if somebody ordered something, um, it's still organized enough that at the end of the night I can quickly um, store it away. And sometimes while I'm doing this, um, I will actually get a head start on my next day to-do list because I will notice that we ran out of XYZ uh, that night. So I'll already know that I have to prep that ahead of time. So you will kind of learn um, that as you go along, your to-do list kind of is constantly flowing from the day before into the day of. So you always have like a really good sense of what you're gonna need to do day to day. And when the night's done and everyone's cleared out um, from the dining room, then you can 
really focus on cleaning up and uh, cleaning up the kitchen in general. So you're gonna be sweeping the floors, uh, mopping, you're going to be cleaning every little part of your station, sanitizing, getting all your dishes to the dishwasher, and you're gonna be on your hands and knees and it's the least glamorous part of the job. Sometimes I would find it satisfying and kind of like, go into this meditative state while cleaning at the end of the day. Um, other times I was just so tired that it was really, really not enjoyable. And I was just so excited once I could finally be done and go home. Um, but that's basically the last part of your day. Sometimes um, you'll have like a quick little team meeting if there was something you know the chef wants to go over or the manager of the restaurant wants to go over etc um, but that's basically it and if it was one of those later nights like a busy night like a thursday friday saturday kind of night um, then you will be done around i want to say closer to midnight and you're typically exhausted by the end of the night because you would have started around 10 or 11 that day and you've been pretty much go, go, go the entire day. Um, I did mention earlier that you have that like little bit of downtime during a staff meal. I just wanna say like, I probably only over the course of a year ever sat down like maybe five times to have an actual staff meal and actually take time to eat my meal. Typically, I was just still running around getting things ready um, for dinner service. So you're on your feet a lot and it is a tiring job for sure. And also something that I didn't mention was at some point in the day, um, usually towards the beginning of your day, you will have a delivery. So it'll be the fresh produce or meats and fish and that kind of stuff for the day. So typically everyone kind of stops what they're doing at that time and everyone will help out to um, get that stuff in the restaurant, sorted, put away. So there's a lot of kind of coming together as a team during your day, but also being in charge of your own station and working independently throughout the day as well. So I'd say there's quite a mix of that. All right, so that is the end of the video. I know that obviously I couldn't show you um, all these things happening in the, your day in the life in a kitchen, but I hope me describing it was enough for you to get a good idea of what that typical day in the life would be. And as always, if you have any more questions about something I talked about or just ra other random questions, just ask them down below in the comments, follow me on Instagram, and you can ask me there as well. And thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.